Welcome to the Expert Series, brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America. Today's episode is Lupus and the Kidneys. Lupus nephritis is kidney disease caused by lupus, and it affects up to 60% of people diagnosed with lupus. So it's important to understand the signs and symptoms of kidney disease so your healthcare team can monitor you regularly for any indication of kidney involvement. Early diagnosis and proper treatment is recommended to avoid in-stage kidney disease. If you've been diagnosed with lupus, ask your healthcare team about your risk for lupus nephritis. And if you should see a kidney specialist called a nephrologist. Understanding your risk is so important for your long-term health, which is why I'm so happy to introduce our guest today, Dr. Brad Roven, a nephrologist Director of Nephrology and Vice Chair at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, specializing in autoimmune kidney disease such as lupus nephritis. Thank you, Dr. Rovin, for being here today. Well, thanks for having me um, on this program. I'm going to talk about lupus nephritis, and lupus nephritis is when the kidney gets involved in patients with uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. And what that means is that in lupus itself, people generate antibodies to their own proteins. And that's one of the fundamental ways that the disease causes trouble. And sometimes these antibodies, when they combine with the proteins, they actually deposit and accumulate inside the filtering units of the kidney. And when that happens, we call this lupus nephritis. Lupus nephritis happens in roughly half of all patients with uh, systemic lupus. It happens more frequently and tends to be more severe in patients of African descent or Hispanic patients. And the problem with lupus uh, nephritis is that it needs to be uh, identified and it needs to be treated because if it isn't, it can progress to end-stage kidney disease, which means a patient would need to have a kidney transplant or go on dialysis. So when we talk about patients with lupus, it's prudent that every time they see their doctor for their lupus, that the doctor at least ask about or consider the possibility that lupus nephritis could have developed. About 30 or 40 percent of patients with lupus nephritis actually have it at the time that they are diagnosed with lupus. And then in the first five to 10 years, it tends to develop in the other patients who are going to get it. So when a patient sees their healthcare provider, always important to have blood pressure taken at the time of a visit. Uh, patients with lupus nephritis uh, can develop high blood pressure, and that could be an indication that something is starting up in the kidney. Additionally, uh, we recommend that patients with lupus nephritis also have a urinalysis at visits when they see their physician, either their rheumatologist or their internal medicine physician or family physician. The things that the physician would be looking for on the urinalysis would be blood or protein in the urine. When the antibody, the antibodies that are generated in lupus uh, a deposit and accumulate in the kidney, they disrupt the filtering units of the kidney, and these filtering units are called the glomeruli. The glomeruli are important for allowing waste products to pass into the urine, but retaining all the elements that the body needs, which would be red blood cells and white blood cells and protein. When these are damaged, these other things leak into the urine and we can often detect them on the urine dipstick. The other issues that are important for the patient to discuss with their physician and the physician to examine is whether or not the patient is accumulating fluid. In other words, are their legs or their abdomen 
or their face becoming puffy. This can be a sign that there's a lot of protein leaking out into the urine and should automatically result in further investigation of the patient's kidney function. These type of investigations can start out just with simple blood tests. We do measure a substance in the blood called creatinine. The creatinine is a measure of kidney function, and as the number goes higher, uh, the kidney function is, is worse. And then we can also measure the amount of protein in the urine, and we can measure the amount of protein in the blood. When patients lose a lot of protein in their urine, their total blood protein tends to go down as well. If these specialized tests uh, suggest that there may be kidney involvement from the lupus, then most patients will be referred to a nephrologist or a kidney physician um, for a definitive way to diagnose the lupus nephritis. The way we do this is through a kidney biopsy. A kidney biopsy is where we have the patient lying on their stomachs and then using a radiologic imaging procedure. Most often this is done simply with a uh, test called an ultrasound where we use sound waves to locate the kidney. Um, we visualize where the kidney is and then numb up the whole area and put a small needle through the skin into the kidney to take a piece of kidney tissue. The kidney tissue is then processed and we look at this with our kidney pathologist and by doing that, we can see or make a diagnosis of lupus, nephritis, um, but more importantly, we can see the extent of damage to the kidney and get an idea of what we need to do to treat the patient. If you do see a nephrologist and they talk about different classes of lupus nephritis, uh, we do have a system of categorizing the disease. It's a complicated system, but the important takeaway is that the classification suggests the amount of inflammation or injury to the kidney. And the pattern of inflammation, and inflammation means invasion of the kidney with white blood cells, and, and they cause uh, damage. The amount of inflammation and the pattern of inflammation often helps us decide on how to specifically treat an individual patient. Now, most of the therapies for lupus nephritis, especially the severe forms of lupus nephritis, involve treatment with high-dose uh, corticosteroids, more commonly known as prednisone, at least in the United States, and then the addition of another drug, which we call a cytotoxic agent. Cytotoxic agent means a, a drug that would affect the immune system and suppress the immune system because essentially, as in general systemic lupus, the patient's own immune system is attacking the kidney in the case of lupus nephritis. These medications are going to modulate uh, the immune system and, in fact, make it less effective. So all patients have to be aware that when they undergo treatment for lupus nephritis, that they will be potentially susceptible to infections, and they have to be very vigilant about not feeling well or developing a cough or a fever, and if that's the case, they have to alert their physicians very quickly. Now, the therapies that we use uh, to treat lupus nephritis are effective in a large number of patients. We can often get the patients to respond at least partially, and in a significant number of patients, we can get them to respond completely and to go into a uh, sustained remission. Uh, to do this, we generally treat very uh, aggressively at the beginning, and then because this is a, a disease that's ongoing, we will eventually put the patients on a less intense therapy and we'll keep patients on the less intense therapy, still suppressing the immune system for a number of years to make sure that the patient doesn't relapse. 
one of the problems with lupus nephritis is that it can relapse and come back. So once the patient is stable for a prolonged period of time, then we often talk about decreasing these medications further or taking patients off these medications. In addition to the medications that your physician would uh, prescribe, the patients can do some things to help themselves. One important issue is that when patients leak protein in their urine, if they take in a lot of salt, it tends to make the protein worse, and this makes everything else worse, like swelling. So one of the things we advise patients is to uh, restrict salt in their diet uh, when they have this type of kidney injury to help keep the symptoms down. Additionally, patients need to practice very good hand washing techniques and to try and avoid situations where they might be exposed uh, to individuals who are ill because they will be susceptible to infections. Additionally, patients should monitor their blood pressure with their physicians and blood pressure should be very well controlled. Once a kidney has an injury of any type, then uh, high blood pressure tends to complicate matters and make the uh, injury worse. These are some of the things that we recommend. We do have a lot of success in treating patients with lupus nephritis. We do think that we can do better with some of the newer therapies that are being developed and evaluated in clinical trials. Specifically, our next goal in the treatment of lupus nephritis is to develop therapies that do affect the immune system and help us control the disease, but do so in a way with far fewer side effects than the medications we use today, which as I mentioned were the, the steroids and the um, cytotoxic agents. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Roven, for taking the time to share your insights about lupus and kidney disease. For those listening in, we invite you to check out more episodes of the Expert Series at lupus.org. Or if you'd like to talk with one of our health educators, go to Contact a Health Educator. And as always, we invite you to check out our online support community, Lupus Connect. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Welcome to the expert series.